Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I Matthew 6, in the Passion. I want to thank Ben for getting the, the rails for us to go up into the, the secret place there. Yeah, you see that? He's blessed his heart, him and his buddy. It says, manifest your kingdom realm. Where are we talking about the kingdom? It says, manifest your kingdom realm. And cause your purpose to be fulfilled on the earth, just as it is in heaven. It's obviously the Lord's prayer. We acknowledge you as our provider. Hmm. We acknowledge you as our provider. Of all we need each day. Every day. Every day. Of all we need each day. So does this start 
when you start working. Need money for gas or need money for the bus. Does it start then? No, it starts when you know him. It starts. That's why it's so important to be teaching your children. It's like, I can't tell you. <laughs> well, I have to tell you. My mother was a tither, my goodness. She was a giver, her and Tom. And they never had an overload of money. But I tell you, they gave thousands and thousands of dollars. They were the givers to missions. They were give their time. They give, they give their money. You know, so I had a really great example of that. My kids had a great example. So I, my kids are great examples. So their kids need to be a great example. Because you know, you know what they say even in the, in the world that the, you know, someone who's made a lot of money and done really well, and uh, this the third generation loses it, loses that money. If they do not teach, they don't teach their children and their children don't teach their children how to handle money, how to work. I'm, I'm just talking normal stuff, you know. Uh, they say the third generation loses it. Why? They didn't learn anything. They didn't learn anything. And sometimes you think it's by osmosis. You know, and it's, it's not always by osmosis. Do your children read the Bible? I don't know many of us are older here, but not so much online here. Do your, your children read the Bible? Do your children see you read the Bible? That's major. That is major. I remember my mom where she used to sit to read the Bible. Lorna would remember that. It was in the living room, had a chair, she had her Bible. And uh, you didn't bug her when she was reading her Bible either. <laughs> but it used to give me a, and I mean, I, I was living for myself, I'm telling you, but as a teenager, you know. But I walked by and I'd see her in her chair with her Bible, and I would feel everything's okay. It's just interesting, you know, how that gauges. I remember years after I was serving God, and I'd, I'd, you know, I'd witnessed to this lady, and, well, in her 20s, and she was really a wild person. And so, you know, we spent some time together, and she didn't go on serving God. And I remember years later, she phoned me up. She was in another part of the country. So she starts talking to me. So I'm saying, so where are you, how are you and God doing? You know, and start preaching at her. She goes, oh, I just phoned to make sure you were still doing this. It makes me feel so much better. <laughs> so, then I said, you don't have to hear me preach it. You know, we went on from there. But, but it's, it's so interesting how important it is for the visual for children and children's children. And that you love the word, that you love the word. We acknowledge you as a provider of all we need each day. Our children are gonna to need to know God the provider more than you the provider. They're going to need to know him more. They're going to need to know that he's the one who will look after you. No matter what, we look down the earth, uh, a timeline. We're looking at a timeline where weird things are happening. I tell you what, our kids, our grandkids need to see that we're standing, that we're standing, that God is our provider. And that God is their provider. Love the story of those two girls uh, when they had the horrible tsunami thing in, in uh, Louisiana. And the place was flooded. You, a horrible situation. And they're walking through water, these two girls, walking through water. They're teenage kids. And uh, thirsty, like thirsty, but you couldn't drink the water. And so they prayed and asked the Lord for water. 
and, the, and down the water comes the thing of water. You know, just floating. Just floating. They had the water. And it says, Lord, we're hungry. And the next thing you know, down the floats comes some snacks, you know, like. <laughs> they had no parents there. They had no parents there. They had no grandparents there. Because it's a personal, it's a personal. You are my provider. Therefore, my finances are your finances. The way I work money is the way you want me to work money. Hallelujah. Just kind of a pet peeve for me. Am I allowed to have one? It's when we don't teach our children about giving. I don't teach giving so that we have money in the bank, even though I'm thankful that we have money in the bank. I don't teach giving so that I get a paycheck or that life stay on. I preach giving because of what it does for you, what the Word of God does for you in the area of giving. I tell you. He's amazing in it. He's amazing. And it's part of kingdom stuff. It says in Matthew 6.25, this is why I tell you, never be worried about your life. For all you need will be provided, such as food, water, clothing. He just finished saying, like, listen, if he looks after the birds, he needs a toil. You know, if he looks after everything else, you're way worth more than a bird. It says, everything your body needs, isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? But whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with the Father God. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful there? He's saying, listen, set time aside here to be with the Father. If you're with the Father... What happens to worry? It can't stay. Because peace comes. Praying in him in secret. And your father who sees all you do will reward you openly. Refuse to worry about tomorrow. But deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, if you ever talk to something and they, and they already have a plan of all the horrible things that are going to happen. They haven't happened yet. They may never happen, and they've done all that worry for nothing. How many have been there? Oh, my goodness. Uh, way too many times. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with the challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Why? Because he's the God who's the provider. Whatever you pray... Praise God. And it says, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. See, this is kingdom stuff. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What is in kingdom? Provision is in kingdom? You know what else is in there? Forgiveness. Right? Not just God forgiving us. Us forgiving others. That's in the kingdom. That's in the game. It's so interesting. It says that you, you know, that if, if um, you know that you're in the kingdom of darkness, you know you're in the kingdom of darkness if you are against your brother. If you hate your brother, it says you are in the kingdom of darkness. Whew. How powerful is that? That's in the Bible. <laughs> That's in the Bible under grace. You hate your brother. So, man, you, hate, you love the body of Christ. And it's interesting because kingdom is authority. It's not just individual authority. He came to give us the kingdom that we together operate in kingdom. That's why you may not say something on a Sunday morning, but I tell you what, you're missed in that seat. Because you're, that authority is missed. 
that agreeing in prayer is missed. See, that fellowship is missed. How poor, you know, thank God for those online. You know, most people are in you know, other countries even, but, uh, but there's nothing like being together. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge, channel, challenge that comes your way. That means we're not running. We're looking. We're singing. But we're understanding that God is with us. You know, it says, for your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. So, you know, in, that, in this scripture, it's talking about... Uh, you know, your treasures, you know, it, things can get stolen here. Same things can get stolen. Don't heap up everything. Things can get stolen here. And, this, and many of you have been stolen from in some way or other. You might not have had a thief come into your house, but you've had things that have been stolen. Right? So it's going to be stolen. So that's why when you're giving, you're giving into a heavenly kingdom. It says where, where it can't be stolen. Well, tell me, do you need, when you get to heaven, are you going to need gold? No. Are you going to need dollars? No. But it's stored there for when? Now. For now. Right. Right. You say, when you're giving, your blessing, what you're doing now is safe in heaven so that when the harvest comes, when the seed grows, when we need it, it comes back down from heaven. Yeah. That's the only way it makes sense. And lots of you have lots of stuff in heaven. But we need to harvest it. In 33, it says, above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these important things will be given to you abundantly. Seek ye first his kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. What does his kingdom represent? What is he speaking? What is about the, that authority? We'll talk a little bit about it, but what about that authority? Seek first the kingdom. Hallelujah. And it says, uh, you know, the healing. It says, it, it says, he told his disciples, go out and preach the kingdom. And what was part of the opinion? Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Even raise the dead. Go preach. That's the kingdom. So if that's what we need to be doing, that's what we need to see. That is part of our dominion. That is part of our kingdom. To preach and lay hands on the sick, do whatever God's telling us to do. He's already written it. He's already written it. He just waits on us. There's a fellow in Mexico. I don't know how many people he's raised from the dead. David Hogan. Hundreds of people. Hundreds of people, this guy's raised from the dead. What he said, he says, but the first 300 didn't rise up. Yeah. Hallelujah for 301. Yeah. Uh, and you talk to anyone that's got a, a tremendous healing ministry, they didn't start with everybody getting healed, but they started. And we got to start. It's not just healing. It's about giving. It's about believing God. Yeah. It's about believing God. That it, there'd be an open door to speak to that person. It's about believing God. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you are the king who rules over power and glory forever. Amen. Pray like this. Our beloved father, dwelling in heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center of which our lives turn. We acknowledge you as the provider. So today we acknowledge you, Father, as the provider. As the provider. It's way bigger than our abilities. It's way bigger. God, will, God gives you gifts. God gives plans. Your, you know, he's got plans for your life. He's got career choices. He's got all kinds of things working. But he is the provider. He gives, uh, he, you know, he blesses our hands. He prospers our hands. But God is way bigger than all of that. He's way bigger than just that. He wants to show you supernatural. If you want supernatural, we've got we to believe for supernatural stuff. Thank you, Father. I know I've got a little confusion in some of that scripture there, but you got the idea. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can look on the earth and see all kinds of things. We can get worried about all kinds of things. We can sidetrack and try not to think of all kinds of things. But God, that we think about you. That our mind goes to you. Whatever things are good, whatever things are honest, whatever things are pure. All those things you've told us to think of. And God, today, in obedience to the word, we confess today, you are my provider. Let's say that together. You are my provider. You are my provider. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. And the jobs can come and go, but you are our provider. You are our provider. God's stock, mar- stock markets can go up and go down, but you are our provider. You are our provider. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And Father, I just thank you today that that which comes against what you would bless, that which comes against is broken in this house in the name of Jesus. That which comes to rob and steal is broken in this house in the name of Jesus. Father, we acknowledge today that we are in your kingdom. We are not in the kingdom of darkness. We are in your kingdom of light. And in there, Father, you prosper. In there, you prosper. In there, you prosper. It's your will to prosper. Your scripture shows us it's your will to prosper. Therefore, we don't put up with stuff. It fights against that. We say today we prosper in whatever you have for us. Jesus brought the kingdom that we would prosper in it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you in your giving today. Luke 9. Luke 9. And 1, he says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. We're in that line, aren't we? And to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's part of the kingdom of God is healing. That's why we, you know, you can get used to not being well. You can get used to pain. You can get used to stuff. And God's saying, don't get used to it now. Because it's not yours. It's, it's not yours. It's not part of the kingdom. He came to give you the kingdom, and that's not part of the kingdom. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we, we receive what God has for us in the realm he has given us when we got born again. We got born again. We went into the, the uh, you know, it says in Matthew 16, 9, talking about the keys. He, he gives us keys to the kingdom. Not just one key, but keys. There's different keys. You know, you look at the parables. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Uh, one of the keys, one of the major keys is what? The sowing of the word. How the word works in the kingdom. And God wants to bless. If, if you're not in the word, you're very limited in the kingdom. If you're allowing the word to affect your heart, uh, to affect your heart for good, that's good. But if you're allowing the world to affect your heart, it says that the seed that's planted by the word is lifted out of you. It's lifted out of you. And if you read those scriptures, it's just so interesting. It says, you know, if the, the things of the world catch you up, the seeds that have even been sown are taken out of your life. And if you get angry or upset and you're offended, it takes, takes it out of your life. And we just thank God for the seed today that's put in us and has grown. And let that which is dormant, let it, let it become alive again. Let it become alive again. Listen. I don't care if you're 10 or 100. What does God want you to do? It's about hearing him and obeying what he speaks. And really, you know, I heard one guy say one time, you're only responsible for 24 hours. You know, it's a strange thing to say. But really, if you're obeying God within that 24 hours... The next day is already prepared, already done, and the next day. And it's obedience of God for the, with the day you're in. He says, I need you to learn some more stuff on this subject. Well, that day you figure it out. 
and you start learning some more stuff. But it's about obedience to his voice. Hallelujah. And it says, it says, so keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, I think it's the passion that says, to forbid on earth that which is forbidden, to release on earth that which is released in heaven. So, he sent the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that's from heaven, Jesus brought. And, and, and what he brought was whatever is legal in heaven now becomes legal on earth. And how does he do that? Well, what he's already done in Christ. But how does he do that? You, through you, it says. Through you. So you, you get to forbid what's illegal. Sickness and disease in your house, you get to forbid what is illegal. This is illegal in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus made it this way. It is legal to be healed. We are healed in the name of Jesus. It is legal to be healed. Thank you, Father. And whatever is loosed on earth is released and loosed in heaven. So where our thoughts isn't this is what's going on in the world, it's what, what's going on in heaven. What is heaven saying about this? <laughs> what is heaven saying about this? I talked about he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning, 1 John 3, 8. And this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we talked about that sin from the beginning actually means the beginning of rule or dominion. And this is, it goes back to the garden where Satan took the authority of the earth, your authority of the earth. And Jesus is saying, and the word is saying here, he that committed sin from the beginning, that one sin, it's not sins, sin from the beginning, that Jesus Christ came. He manifested, he came into the earth to take that dominion away. He came not just to get you to heaven. He came to bring dominion of heaven to the earth. So it's not about us praying that we'll escape real quick. <laughs> it's like, what, what are we supposed to be doing in the dominion? What are we supposed to be doing in God's kingdom? I mean, it'd be great if we were all, I'd love us all to be raptured away together. Wouldn't that be nice? Except for all those relatives that aren't serving God. Huh? All those people that have no idea that Jesus Christ came to set them free. But I, I just don't like people hopping off to heaven without me. but I'm not intending to go anytime soon. I'm not going to an old folks home. Even though I think it's wonderful. There's so many good senior homes looking after people well. But that is not my plan. It's just not my plan. Is it your plan? I don't know. I think if you're going there, you better go there to take dominion. You know, like Liz. Oh, she's 90 what? 96. Liz Ellett. She's in, in where she is. She's teaching Bible study. She's amazing. God's kept her head clear. She knows a word like nobody business. And there she is in her 90s in a care, semi-care facility having Bible studies. Come on, let's do that. Huh? Let's do that. And sense her tithe. When it's in us, it's in us. Bless her heart. She's amazing. Thank you for manifested. It means that it, he became visible, that Jesus Christ stepped out of the invisible into the visible. Manifested to destroy the work of the devil. 
So I'm thinking you're getting that by the third week, if you've been here. He destroyed the works of the devil. Now, what, are the wor- what are the works of the devil? Well, dominion. The works of the devil is he took dominion. He took dominion from man and, and grabbed it for himself. We should be really ticked. And the darkness, you know that Satan doesn't do anything without influencing people to do it. He even gives, he even uses our imagination for evil. I mean, we we are really good at this stuff. Satan says there are all these demons, all these all all these spirits are all around. But the only way they can get stuff done is influencing us. And if he can get you depressed, if he can get you in a good old woe is me trip, if he can get you on being ticked at somebody, and that swirls in your head, what's that time wasted in your brain where God could be doing something in that brain? (laughs) Be blessing or something creative in that brain. And he comes and takes dominion. Where does he take dominion? In influencing you. Influencing those around you. You know, he can't stop you from going to heaven. You're already in. But he can stop your purpose. He can stop the purpose of God in your life. You say, well, I think that's all gone past now. No, every day there's a purpose. Every day, God's got something for you. Otherwise, let's just go home. He has a purpose, and it's to take dominion. Hallelujah. Took control, and Jesus Christ came for dominion. You know, in the cool of the day, I mentioned that that, uh, when Adam... And Eve were walking in the cool of the day, talking to the, you know to meet the Lord. It actually meant uh, cool of the day. Actually meant uh, walking in the Spirit. It meant they walked in the Spirit with the Lord in the cool of the night, in the cool of the day, walked with the Lord. And Eden means presence. It means they were in the presence of the Lord. What happened when they decided they play God themselves? That they're the one, they'd make their own decisions. They, they would decide what's good and evil. Welcome to our world. They would decide what's good and evil. And they were moved out of the presence of the Lord. Out of Eden, out of the presence of the Lord. Jesus Christ came. That we now are in the presence of the Lord. That we're no longer in a foreign country. We're in his country, in the presence of the Lord. He's done amazing stuff for us. Thank you, Father. He came on assignment. Hallelujah. That's why he prayed, your kingdom come. Because the Father sent him, your kingdom come. And your will be done. He was the first invader. We're the rest. Thank you, Father. And that, you know when it says that he came to destroy, this is neat, when he came to destroy the works of the devil, that's actually, destroy is actually a legal term, and it means to dissolve a contract. He came to, de- to destroy, to destroy, to dissolve a contract, to loose from something that is binding. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. To loose us from that which is binding. Hallelujah, the keys of the kingdom, to loose us from that which is binding. I believe every, every wicked thing that tries to attach to our bodies, every wicked thing tries to get our minds, every wicked thing that tries to get our children or our children's children, every wicked thing that we have power over that in the dominion that he has given us. And so it's not, like, it's not begging God. It's proclaiming what he's already spoken. Proclaiming what he's already done. He has given us authority in the kingdom of heaven. 
He came to give kingdom, you know, uh, that, and to destroy the works of the devil, that continual work. Kingdom is, means, uh, the word kingdom is made up of two words, king and dominion. And who's the king? Oh. Who is the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Psalm 24, 8. And then the second word is dom. It is the power or dominion. Kingdom dominion. It is the power to rule. It is the power to govern. And exercise sovereignty as royalty. What's he given us? In his name, what has he given us? To rule and govern is kingdom. Thank you, Father. And when he came, he didn't come to give us a religion. He came to give us a government. He came to give us the government of the kingdom of heaven, where we govern. Does this make us better than anyone? No, it's not got anything to do with that. It's got to do with what he did. And when we hear him and do what he says, that there is dominion. His dominion comes into the earth. His dominion comes into the earth. Thank you, Father. He came to give us a kingdom, not a religion. So Christianity is, you know, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism. Christianity is not a religion. He came to totally what nothing else could do, what nothing else can do. He came to give us a kingdom. He came to take back that which was mankind's in the first place. He came to take back and give us the kingdom of heaven. He brought the kingdom of heaven to earth. And, in, and the way to get in is to be born again. The way to get in is to be spiritually born again. And you, you're, you're, so it's not just about, oh, good, I'm going to try and be a good Christian. Go to church. You know, read my Bible if I'm not too tired. Witness if I really have to. It's so not that. Dominion. He's given you dominion. He's given you dominion. So today, thinking about things maybe in your life. God, in this, in this situation, how does your kingdom come? How do I hear? What do I speak? Thy kingdom come. What's my part in this? It's just two realms, one dark, one light. It's just two realms, one dark, one light. And we carry light. The heavens are the heavens, but the earth he has given to the sons of man. We carry that authority. Thank you, Father. You know, Colossians 1.13, he has rescued us completely from the tyrannical rule of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom realm of his beloved son. Jesus Christ on the cross, raised from the dead, he said he translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Like that was instantaneous. We're not trying to get there now. He instantaneously, when we receive him as, as Savior, he instantaneously, get that word out, instantaneously translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. So where darkness tries to snip at your heels, ah, no. I'm in another kingdom. I'm with the good king. I'm in the good kingdom. You notice how many people blame the good king for what the bad king does? Just amazes me. Or they go into the black kingdom, get beat up, and blame God. Instead of being in the good kingdom, using all the authority he has in that kingdom. And if, and if that king wants you to go attack, I'll tell you what, you win. Because he's given the direction. 
He's given the words. He's given the life to us. Got to love to fight sometimes. Thank you, Father. Here's the main thing about darkness. It says that when the earth was covered in darkness, the earth was void. That also means chaos. Isaiah says the same thing about the beginning. And that in darkness, there is chaos. And the earth, the earth is in chaos. Even, even that where he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That world, the world there, is actually the governmental. It's not just, you know, us, the people of the earth. It's actually the controlling factors of the earth. He's actually talking about the governments of the earth. For God so loved the world and the mess the world was in, the chaos the world was in, that he was coming to bring his order because he is a God of order. He is a God of order. That order is not rigid in the sense of he is not, he's creative. It's full of joy, full of life. You're saying he came to give order. I don't know about you, but I think military terms there. But he came to bring life and creativity and awesomeness in order. Because if things are out of order, they never accomplish what they were supposed to do, right? It's never accomplished. If a house is out of order and kids running around and, you know, you can't have a conversation and everything's wild, it's totally out of order. Why? Because isn't that God doesn't want those kids to have fun? But there's a the time and the place, you know, I used to sit and visit a kitchen table and Telling my girls, especially my two younger ones, they'd always want to come and hang out. Just as snoopy as all get out, you know. <laughs> Evo, not so much. I finally told them one day, listen, if you don't stop bugging me when I'm visiting with people, I'm going to come and visit you when you're visiting with your friends. They just stopped. But it isn't that I don't want my kids saying hello to people and, you know, those kind of things and having fun in different areas. But their, you know, activity was taken away from what I wanted to get done or what should have got done. So if you have a family that the kids are out of control, the end result is the kids are a mess and grow up a mess. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ can move in at any time? With your adult children that you might have done not so good with? <laughs> He's awesome. He came to redeem the cosmos, right? And, and then he said, you redeem the cosmos, and he said, here, I'm giving it back to you. Govern. He said to Adam about dominion, it meant I'm giving him government. So govern. Govern your lives according to the word. Govern your lives according to the word. Govern your lives according to his strength of grace in, that will enable you to. Order your life that you have authority and know your authority in the kingdom of heaven where we all sit. You know, when it talks about the light means, light actually means, uh, he said he redeemed the, co he redeems the co cosmos of the world. And Jesus gave it back to us. Uh, like he originally intended. But when he talks about light, you know, the word light, it actually means knowledge, not a light bulb going up. It actually means knowledge. And the word darkness means ignorance. So there's knowledge, and then there's ignorance. That's why the word of God has got to be in your life. Because that is wisdom. That is understanding. That's enlightenment. That's the energy of God in the word. And ignorance means you don't know, but you could know. 
How can you find out what you don't know? You come into the light. You come into his knowledge. You come into his understanding. You come into his word. How, <laughs> I mean, we could all say that we believe certain things, and then we read the word, and we go, oh, boy, have I been an idiot. Ignorant. Or his word brings life, brings knowledge, brings understanding, shows us how to live life, how to be prosperous in life, how to help people in life, because we have dominion. If you go in and you feel like you don't have dominion, you know what? You've got to get alone with Jesus. Because you shouldn't be able to have and you should be able to talk to the kings of the earth. Really. Lots of us don't want to talk to the kings of the earth, but you should be able to. Where God takes you, you should be able to go. And he's preparing you to take dominion. He's already given it to us. We take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Father, we thank you for it, that in dominion there's sound minds. That in dominion, there are sound minds. That in dominion, Father, there's no autism. In dominion, Father, there's nothing that robs the mind. In dominion, there's healing of the mind. In dominion, there's even the healing of the soul that needs to be done. In dominion, demon, the demon realm that takes advantage has to be pushed back. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And let's stand up today. Let's stand up. Let's stand up for all of those that are struggling in the mind. Struggling in the mind today. Uh, uh, you know what? I bet there's not one person here who doesn't know somebody who's struggling in the mind. Might be a friend, a family member, grandchild, son, daughter, husband, wife. In the kingdom of heaven, there's soundness of mind. And the power, and the power to make decisions. The power to make decisions. You know, I, I was in this morning when I was praying, I just saw a demon spirit just pushing somebody around, a child around, just pushing that child around. And it was all, in the, all against the mind. So not the dominion of God. So not the dominion of heaven. So not. And we have power to push back that demonic realm that attacks the minds of people and brings that confusion and fear to them. And Father, we just thank you today that we lift up those that are in our hearts today. And we thank you that you are the deliverer. You came to deliver. You came to, to put uh, order, to put order, to put order where there's chaos. And Father, we speak today, order, 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 order to minds, order to that soul realm, order to that brain. That brain begins to heal. It, that, that brain begin to heal. Where the brain has been wounded, let the brain begin to heal even now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let light, let knowledge become their portion. And darkness, ignorance far from them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Koria Mahandoriata. Thank you, Father. I feel like we need a, we need a tune. We need a, you know. Uh, come quick, come quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I feel like we're, 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 we're kingdom. We're in the kingdom. But, you know, the kingdom says, cast out devils. So you're in a battle. You're still casting out devils. You're still healing the sick. 
but you're functioning in the kitchen, in the kitchen. You're functioning in the, I'm really in trouble if that's the case, but we're functioning in the kingdom. See, we're, fu we're functioning in the kingdom to get it done. Today, we're functioning in the dominion in this house that God has given us. Together, we are functioning. We're agreeing with each other in the deliverance of those who are on our hearts today, those who God puts in our mind today, that they would be set free. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the power of the lie be broken by the spirit of truth today. Let the power of the lie be broken by the spirit of truth today. Let the power of the lie be broken by the spirit of truth today. Through the mighty name of him who we serve, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Deliverer, Jesus the Dominion Taker. Hallelujah. It's 
your way. Yahweh, it's your way. Keep the cricket places straight. Yahweh, it's your way. You take the cricket places and make way. Yahweh, it's your way. You make the cricket places come straight. Yahweh, it's your way. You make the cricket places come straight. Yahweh, it's your way. You make the cricket places come straight. Yahweh, it's your way. Make the cricket places come straight now. Yahweh, it's your way. You make the cricket places come straight. We say Yahweh, it's your way. You make the cricket places come straight. Straight. Straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up and fly right, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up and fly straight, 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 straight. Oh, make the cricket pass become straight in the mind right now. Oh, bring in it all together the way you all the way you wrote it from the beginning of time let the one come let it 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 come I have the mind of Christ I have the mind of Christ I have the mind of Christ and we declare we declare they have the mind of Christ we say they have the mind of Christ come straight they have the mind of Christ a sound mind, they have the mind of, come to yourself, they have the mind of Christ. Come into healing, they have the mind of, come into deliverance, they have the mind of, come into your freedom, they have the mind of, come into your mercy, they have the mind of, come into your favor, they have the mind of, come into your favor, they have the mind of. Come into your destiny, they have the mind of. Come into your freedom, have the mind of. We speak favor, 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 release your favor, your favor, your favor, your favor, your favor, your favor. that cause these mind difficulties. Lord, we take authority just like the blood of Jesus severed all of the past and all of our future. I just thank you right now we take authority over the curses, the generational curses that cause minds to come into these places. And we say, Lord, that ye are severed. They are severed by the blood of Jesus. We say, let them be severed in this bloodline. Let them not come and will they, they will not be passed down again. We declare, Father, that you are our bloodline. Father, Jesus is our bloodline. We declare those things that are just like, oh, that was like my dad, like my uncle, like my auntie. We say no. We say no. We say no. No, anything that doesn't come from the kingdom of heaven is not going to come to my family. We sever them right now in the name of Jesus by the authority given to us by the blood of Jesus. And we say let them be broken. The spirit of that lie has been broken today. We do not receive generational curses, but we receive the generational blessing of a thousand generations. That's what we receive, a thousand generational blessing in our family. And all of the saints say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give a testimony on that? Okay. I wanted to give you a word of encouragement. In June, my husband and I went to Montreal because his brother was supposed to die. They said there would be 5% chance that people in this condition actually survive. 
His brother has schizophrenia. He's been in an institution for over 30 years. When you visit him, he doesn't really communicate. So he was in a coma, he had seizures, he was in the hospital. He woke up and he was in his right mind. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what's beautiful about that? He wasn't praying for himself, someone was praying for him. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. You know, I was thinking of as something this morning. We'll uh, finish with this, but. Ray, this isn't your last Sunday, is it? Next, no. next Sunday, okay. That's when we get to send him out of the country <laughs> next week. Deported. <laughs> During the Jesus people, we were down in Seattle for Jesus people ah, from everywhere. We don't even know how the word got around. We didn't have what you have now, but man, there was hundreds and hundreds of young people. And um, we were in a university um, you know, stage area, great, great big stage. And there was just such a love of God in there, and everybody's hugging each other, you know, we're having a real love, love fest, you know. And, and then this guy came up to me and hugged me, and it was so lustful that I, I felt like I was going to throw up. Because to be in that kind of atmosphere... To see that slimy thing, you know, it just magnifies it. You, I just put it away as, you know, the guy's a jerk and that. But it, but it was just really slimy. And so near the end of the service, they had everybody come up for prayer, wanted prayer, and they all lined up, you know, like this on this big stage. And so I was standing by the stage right about there, and here's this guy standing there. You know, and I'm thinking, boy, does he need it. But anyway, there he is. He's, he's, he's just standing there. And they're coming praying. They came to him, prayed for him. He flew on the floor. They just kept going. He flew on the floor. His body came up, twirled like that, went down again, went up again, and twirled like that, down. And I'm thinking, I'm looking around. It's like no one's seeing this but me, right? But you know what it showed me? Even... Someone operating, you know, bringing defilement. God delivered him. God delivered him. And when we're praying for people today, many of them may be just totally have been bound by the demon power, but God delivers them. God delivers them. His mercy delivers them today. In the name of Jesus. We expect good reports. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God.